welcome everyone to my channel. Today I am going to be attempting to make some Victorian lampshades, which is a really beautiful art form that I so admire in anybody who makes it now and has made it in the past, but something that I have absolutely no knowledge about. I actually have been working on this for so many months. I have had a really busy couple months and so I was working on it on and off, but I put in an order for these wire frames, I think back at the end of March, very early April, somewhere around that time. And they actually have to be custom welded. So you have to find a specific place that makes these frames. You can tell them what kind of frame you like and they get a welder to make it. I can link where I got mine from. And after I had received it, I got some seam binding tape and covered the entire frame in that so that I have some sort of gripping in order to sew the fabric onto. Next, I have these beautiful collection of fabrics that I found that I thought would have completely embody the look that I am going after. And I am trying to measure everything, make sure that the panels that I cut are appropriate for the sizing of the actual frame, giving a little bit of seam allowance and all that kind of stuff so I'm not making my sewing process difficult. So here I am just diagramming that out. I have my fabric folded in half, so I have basically two pieces of fabric for each panel of the lampshade and I'm just pinning the two pieces of fabric together and setting them aside, so I'm trying to be very organized. I will say though that I did not iron the fabric, which is a really big no-no, and I did do this the first time I made a lampshade. This is actually my second one. You're gonna see the first one in just a little bit, but I wanted to explain after I had already done it once, and so I'm showing my second lampshade first. The second fabric I got has more texture, so I'm not gonna iron that, but after cutting, I do go in with an iron, make sure that everything's really nice because once it's on the lampshade, you're kind of screwed if it's wrinkly. So now all I have to do is to take some pins and spread out my fabric so that there's no warping, no looseness, but it's not also too tight that it's getting any kind of puckering or anything like that. And then this was just a very tedious long process of whip stitching all along the perimeter of the frame and this was definitely the most time intensive part of it. And after having done two frames back to back, my fingers were hurting, I had band-aids on them, but it was a really fun thing. I just had my audiobooks playing in the background and it was a very kind of therapeutic, rhythmic activity to do. So now I have all the main panels done and I'm gonna go in to do these smaller panels that go kind of in between. This was definitely a little trickier because the gapping was very, tight in some spots, but I tried my hardest to get it as smooth as I could. Next I'm going to begin to layer on this beautiful textured fabric. It's actually, I'm using it wrong side up because the right side has this glitter which I'm just not really into, but I loved that it was a very identical color to the fabric underneath and I think that the texture adds a really cool dimension to it. And then I'm basically just doing the same thing and whip stitching this on top of the first panel making sure it's really secure and then just trimming the edges as close as possible because we are going to put trim on top of it but I don't want any of it kind of sticking out. After having done those two panels my idea was to have the two remaining panels covered in this beautiful black chiffon and kind of do a really cool fan effect with it. I don't know what it's technically called. I cut off the sizing and I actually ended up doing, I think, I'm kicking myself for not writing this down, I think I did triple or double, I think it was double, double the width of the panel size in the amount of fabric for the chiffon because it's going to be scrunched a little bit and so there has to be more fabric obviously. So I start off by securing the base to the bottom and then I'm kind of folding the fabric in half to see where the midway point is and putting the midway point pinned at the top so that I make sure that the fabric is evenly distributed. Then I'm doing this thing where I just kind of like pull on the fabric and it naturally creates these overlaps in the fabric. And then I'm carefully going in and pinning all over. This process took such a long time. It did not come easy to me. I see lampshade makers who just make it look so simple. And this was tricky, I will say, for myself. But I think I got it to look decent. 
I had a little while ago gone to a really awesome store in Connecticut for affordable fabrics, it's actually called affordable fabric, but they have all sorts of really great fabric and appliques and I got this applique for I think like two bucks and so I thought that it would look beautiful on this lamp. So I'm just adhering it with a little bit of fabric tack and I'm using this on only the very larger portions of the applique so that none of it's kind of seeping through and looking messy. I was very paranoid during this process to be honest but I am going in and securing all the very fine smaller parts of it that weren't able to be glued on to make sure that everything is nice and adhered to the fabric. And then I almost forgot to do this part but I got this beautiful netting that I just, I loved it because I feel like the inspiration for the room that this is going to be in is kind of like, I don't know, I'm feeling like Moulin Rouge meets Vampire Liar and this just felt like fishnet stockings to me and I thought that it would look really kind of cool and fun on the smaller panels of the lampshade. After having done that, we're getting really close to the end and I am going to be covering all of the seams, no, whatever they're called, the edges with the trim. And then I just picked a very simple trim. I also got it at the Ford Affordable Fabric Store because I needed quite a bit of it for two lampshades. And I'm making sure to keep a pretty decent gap before hitting the very bottom so that I don't have too much bulge and overlap when I put the topmost decorative piece, which you'll see in just a moment. But after having done that, I'm going in now and adding some fringe. I'm doing this to the underside so it is not seen. And I just applied some glue and slowly, section by section, adhered it to the lamp. And I'm using some duckbill clips for my hair that I just had lying around because I'm resourceful like that and it worked pretty dang good in order to make sure that nothing kind of slid off with the glue until it dried. I'm making sure to not keep them there too long so that, you know, I don't accidentally glue a pin to my lampshade because that would be really bad. I remove the little binding whatever that is of the fringe. And now is for the very, very last piece, the cherry on top. I'm using my clips again and I'm using this very beautiful, I'll use it, I'll leave the Etsy shop that I got this from down below, but this trim is gorgeous and you can't see it, but the black gems have a very, very subtle red undertone, which I think just is beautiful altogether. It is incredibly thick, so I had to go in very, very small portions because making those Vs were not very easy. But here's the finished result of the second lampshade that I made. And now I'm going to show you a little bit of much quicker version of the very first one that I attempted, which I have to say, out of the two, I think this one was harder. The shape had more weird curvatures and some smaller areas that were kind of tricky, but I, you know, whatever, I got it done. I was a good girl and I ironed my fabric before I cut it. But again, it's the same process. I just mapped out the panel. This one, I had much less fabric. I was also incredibly disorganized. Don't be like me. I went to Joann's and I had no idea how much fabric I needed. And so that's not good. Luckily, I was saved and able to get everything perfectly on my lampshade, but literally just barely. There were some very, very tight areas in this uh, sewing that I had to use a curved sewing needle and that helped me a lot because my fingers were too fat and things were just getting really difficult to kind of get into some of those really tight nooks and crannies, especially where that topmost leaf. I also got this beautiful lace piece from that amazing store and I thought that it would look absolutely elegant and gorgeous draped over the lampshade and I'm still so obsessed with it and the way that the curves I love how it kind of peekaboos over onto the lighter green section I am using the same kind of netting I applied the netting with just some of the glue Next, I am taking some chiffon fabric and again doing that fanning effect. So this was my first attempt. One of the things that made it a little bit difficult is that I had the sh chiffon that was gorgeous, but it was a lot thicker. So before attempting my second lampshade, I went and bought some uh, that was a lot lighter and a lot thinner. And that I think made a really big difference. It still was challenging, like I said, but it was much easier than 
this fabric that ended up kind of looking a little bit too pleated and not as elegant as I kind of wanted it to be in the way that it turned out with the red lampshade. I again found this applique as well, I think again a couple bucks, and I thought that it would just look really cute on the front of this lampshade. Then I'm adding all of my trim. One of the challenging parts also is that this trim is tying, trying to hide that bunching and so that was something I learned for the second time around to make sure that that bunching of the chiffon is low enough that it doesn't add any bulk or make it hard for the trim to go over. I do also add a couple pins to the trim once I'm gluing it on to help secure it in place and then remove them just like a couple minutes afterwards. And then similar process as with the red lampshade, I am taking some fringe. This one is quite a bit longer and just putting it on the inside and then taking some thicker, more ornamental trim and going along the outside. And it has little tassels and it was it was a lot easier to do this one because this one had a lot less sharp Vs. It still had some swoops and curves, but overall that part of it was simpler with this frame shape. And here is the finished result. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you are so inclined and you enjoy Creative Projects with a Twist. I hope that you have a wonderful day or night or whatever, and I will see you again next week. Bye.